a fellow Dawn enthusiast. So in this video, I want to do something special. I have a friend that has a birthday coming up, and I want to give him a present. Of course. The present I want to give him is a, of a character from something we reference a lot back and forth, because we watch a lot of dumb shows and reference a lot of dumb inside jokes. And one of them is from a show called Robot Chicken. It's not for children. And one of the characters is named... Uh, that's just her name. That's her, how she identifies as. So if you're offended by that, I'm sorry. So again, I want to give him a, a toy of Miss Pudding, and there is none. The original character is Strawberry Shortcake, and they reworked it and did a bunch of things, and she looks yellow and not strawberry anymore. And I'm going to have to do one myself. So I went out and got myself something close, a close facsimile. Even Strawberry Shortcake toys didn't come close, so I had to go off-brand, and a boxy girl is the closest I could get, and I'm going to put up a screenshot right now, comparing the two, and if I can do this right, it will look great. It's going to take some hair rerouting, rerouting, uh, a new face-up, clothes making, and I think it'll be kind of a nice way of surprising him. And this is the process I'm about to go through, so... Hope you enjoy, and wish me luck. Okay, first thing up is to gently open this box to reuse it later in the gift wrapping. And it's already ripped. This thing is real kid friendly. I'll give it that. I'll try to fix that up later. Gotta keep my area clean. It's a lot less stressful and a lot easier to find things. Here's hoping the head will just pop right off. Not so much. That's okay. We're gonna use a little bit of heat on this sucker. Clothes come off first. I don't want to burn this stuff or melt it to the plastic. Just do my best to heat this up evenly and gently. And it works. I'm gonna have to use that as my first step next time. That made it so much easier. Just pop that number back in place. Kind of burn some of the hair. That's fine, it's all coming out anyways. It doesn't look like they really were able to secure the hair down the inside, so this might be easy. She's really bald in the very back of her scalp. This is crazy. And so commences the hair pulling. Try to be careful not to ruin the plastic by ripping it across or something. It feels the length is a little bit detrimental, so I'm gonna have to cut it down and make it more manageable. The hairline edge seems to be really densely packed, so I'm going to take my time to separate these out. Pull them one by one, just so I make sure not to rip anything. Separating these one by one. By one. Whip it. This is so tedious. Let me work on the back again. It's so much easier. I like the back. And finally, plucking out the last of the hair strands. Very satisfying. Alright, time to try to remove this paint. So I heard acetone is what you use to take this paint off with, so... I was going to use what I have on hand. Hopefully it works. Just a few rubs and she'll be clean. Okay, she's just creepy looking. Why isn't this working? Keep it up. Okay, and this is what I figured out. It's not going to work, and I still have the scalp to work on. I'm not going to do this. Let me go get some more stuff. Pure acetone. Let's see if this looks any better. It freaking worked. That's all I had to do. Use pure acetone if you want to attempt this kind of thing. Look at this thing go to work. It's just taking the paint off almost immediately. That's the lesson learned. 
Okay, next up is airbrushing. So I need to tape off any areas I don't want to be painted over. Be careful to get as much as I can of the face and neck. My extremely sophisticated airbrushing station. Okay, just gonna gently build up layers of paint until it's a nice solid color. No rushing, you don't want to get gops or goops going on. I don't want this color, but I'll work with it. Okay, now to sort my doll hair. I'm gonna have to stretch this out to make sure it don't start twisting up and nodding on me. Easy enough. It's like Top Ramen. Alright y'all, it's time for my first attempt at hair rooting. Hope it's not a disaster. Either way, it's gonna be a birthday present. Get in there. Alright, first hair in. Yeah, I, that wasn't too bad. So far, so good. I think I'm bad on the length, but whatever. It's my first attempt. It'll work somehow. Have to twist these strands so they fit into the groove of the needle. Pretty nice. A bit thick, but maybe we'll do something with it to make it work. Last strand. This is so satisfying. Done. I'm finished. Now to make sure everything's in there, won't come out. A little bit of glue. Make sure everything's nice and bonded in there. Don't want this stuff coming out. Just smear it around. Okay, not too bad. Looks good from the front. Now for the hairstyling. I have to get into the shape of a ponytail so everything close to the scalp has to be brushed down. But I don't want to brush out the curls and the tips, so this is a little tricky. Securing it down with a little bit of thread, winding around. Don't want ever coming out. And to make it look a little bit nicer, a little bow. You know, actually it's a lot better than I thought. This may work. And putting her hair up to protect it for the next step, face up. Just laying down some guidelines for I want everything. Thankfully, a makeup is not that difficult. It's kind of simple. It's nothing too complicated. So I'm lucky in that respect. Otherwise, it would be a mess. I'm so lucky she has simple colors on her. And my favorite part was the highlights. And it's real simple, just a few dots. Just gives her a little bit of life. Wow, it's really looking good at this point. First attempt too with hair rooting. Fortunately, I couldn't go out to find fabric that I needed, but in retrospect, I probably would not have found a type of fabric I would have been happy with. So I did it myself anyways with acrylic paint. And looking back, this probably have been faster and a lot less stressful. And it kind of gives me a sense of satisfaction also because at this rate, I'm fully making this doll by hand. So it's a little bit more personal investment in it. Okay, so next up, I need to make a pattern for the dress, bodice, and the leggings. So I'm gonna do what I always do, wrap her up in saran wrap, put duct tape on her, and mark out why I want the seams and edges and everything. Of course not shown is the skirt, the collar, or the frills around the edges. That stuff at the eyeball. So I had to find out, unfortunately, that there's a downside to using hand painted fabric. It doesn't work too well in machines. Maybe it was my machine or I had the 
wrong settings on it, so I had to go get a something to drink, sit down, and I'm going to do this all I hand. So I guess it's a little more satisfaction I could have for making this, but I really wish I would could have just used the machine. So let's face it, you don't want to see me hand sewing something for hours on end, so let's get to the reveal. And as you can see, Miss Pudding came together pretty well. I have to say I really like the hair rooting process. That's something I can do. I'm pretty patient. I don't mind doing all that work. About the shoes, I'm sorry I didn't get a shot of me uh, airbrushing them. Those are the boots that dog came with. I just chopped them down, painted them. They work very well for the character. But here's a comparison shot to the character I'm trying to make her look like. And aside from a few differences, not too bad. Especially the head shape. Again, I just want to say thank you for joining me in this, making this little project. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed the process. And special shout out to my friend. Again, happy birthday. I hope you appreciate the work that went into this. And you'll be seeing it soon.